Welcome back to the Stories of Northern Life podcast brought to you by the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. I'm your host, Nicole, and today we are going to be talking about the War of 1812. Before we get into it, just remember to please like and share this podcast so that more people can listen to it. We can keep boosting it in the algorithm and remember to leave reviews. The War of 1812. After the Revolutionary War, President James Madison was frustrated by British actions and declared war on Great Britain on June 18, 1812. The war had several causes, including British restrictions on American trade, the impressment of American sailors into the British Navy, and British support for Indigenous tribes resisting American expansion. Now, as the War of 1812 was just getting started, Great Britain was already involved in the Napoleonic Wars over in France. So they couldn't really send any aid to us here in Canada. Basically, we were left to our own defenses and we had to defend ourselves with those who were already stationed here and local people, as you'll see, like Mr. Ermatinger. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever heard about the War of 1812. Um, Maybe about 12 years ago, you started really hearing about it when we had a lot of events all across Canada and even here in the Sioux to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the war. But if you're outside the Sioux learning about the war, you probably didn't really hear about what happened during the War of 1812 here in Sault Ste. Marie. Now, the Sioux was a strategic location due to its position along the Great Lakes and its importance in the fur trade. So let's look more about what happened here. If you want to learn more about the war, you can always visit the Old Stone House, especially this weekend, September 25th to the 28th, 2024, for our annual Fall Rendezvous, where you can see and talk to reenactors portraying life around 1812. So first, let me introduce you to Fort St. Joseph, if you haven't already heard about that. It is a historic site on St. Joseph Island, about half hour, hour east of the Sioux, and was established by the British between 1796 and 1799. It served as a strategic military outpost and a center for trade and commerce, particularly in the fur trade. And this was also... Um, where a veterans battalion was stationed. So all the men here had already seen their fair share of war and served their time. So it made it a lot harder for them to be those young um, spry soldiers. But during the War of 1812, Fort St. Joseph was actually a staging ground for the British attack on Fort Mackinac, the fort that sits on Mackinac Island. And today, Fort St. Joe is now a National Historic Site uh, managed by Parks Canada. So the key events and battles here included the capture of Fort Michelin Mackinac, or Fort Mackinac as we know now. And that occurred on July 17th, 1812. And this was actually the first military maneuver of the war and it's one that is pretty much never talked about in the general narrative of the war of 1812. So Captain Charles Roberts of the 10th Royal Veterans Battalion was stationed at Fort St. Joseph and he received word of the declaration of war. Under General Isaac Brock's command, Roberts prepared to capture Fort Michel Mackinac with only 40 men. So he also enlisted help of Mr. Ermatinger, who gathered his allies, voyageurs, coureurs de bois, and indigenous warriors. And he also did the same with Mr. Johnson. So all in all, they had almost 400 men, some records say, to help take the fort. 
the departed Fort St. Joseph on July 16, 1812, and arrived at Mackinac Island early the next day. The Americans, unaware war had even been declared, surrendered the fort without a shot being fired. Now, as I said, this was the first military maneuver of the war, but it was also the only one without any bloodshed. So the British were pretty much able to keep the fort for the whole of the war. So they captured it right away and they were able to keep it till the very end. Now let's move on to 1814. And if you remember from some of my other episodes, you remember me talking about the Northwest Company Fort here in Sault Ste. Marie. And how I said that the original fort and lock was burned during the War of 1812 during an American raid. So here it is. The American raid on Sault Ste. Marie, July 14th, 1814. The American forces raided the Northwest Fur Trading Company post in Sault Ste. Marie, burning houses, stores, and sheds including some belonging to Mr. Johnson, whom they suspected of involvement in the Fort Michilimackinac attack. Mrs. Ermatinger, Mananawi as we remember from last week, warned the Johnsons of the attack, allowing Mrs. Johnson time to save her children before their house was destroyed. So the Americans came through and they started with burning Fort St. Joseph and then they moved on to the Sioux. But in retaliation of this, you had the burning of Washington. So British forces captured and burned several U.S. government buildings, and this included the president's house. So after that, they had to rebuild the home for the president. And at the time, they only had white paint, so they painted it white. Now you have the White House. So the War of 1812 actually gave America their White House. But that is not the only thing that we gave um, America during the War of 1812, if you want to sort of look at it in that way. We also have the poem um, that was written in sort of a reaction to the war. And one of the battles is the Star of Spangled Banner poem. So if you know their national anthem song, that was actually a poem that was written during the War of 1812. And then finally, we have the Treaty of Ghent, which was signed uh, December 24th, 1814. And this treaty ended the war and restored the pre-war boundaries. Um, but it didn't necessarily address the causes um, of the war. But all the territory that was gained or lost was all restored to what it was before the war. There was no real winner of the war. It was almost more of a stalemate. But we can say that the ones who lost the war were the indigenous peoples. So they had been promised all of these amazing things from either the British or even the Americans for their help in the war. And after that, they received none of what they were promised. Indigenous warriors played a crucial roles in the War of 1812, often aligning with the British to resist the American expansion. They provided intelligence, guided British forces, and participated in key battles, including those at the Sioux and Mackinac Island. Leaders like Tecumseh, a Shawnee chief, were pivotal in forming alliances with the British and leading Indigenous confederacies against American forces. Here in Sault Ste. Marie, we have Chief Shingwak, also known as Shingwak Kons or Little Pine. He was a prominent Anishinaabe leader who played a significant role during the War of 1812. He led a coalition of First Nations, Métis, and British forces in the capture of Fort Mackinac and fought alongside figures like General Isaac Brock and Chief Tecumseh. After the war, Shingwa continued to advocate for Indigenous rights and self-determination. 
envisioning a future where indigenous communities could coexist with European settlers while maintaining their autonomy. And these were things that, unfortunately, Xinguang didn't really get to see, but are now being realized. So we have Xinguang University or Xinguang Kinemigamig. So if you want to learn more about Chief Xinguang and all of his amazing accomplishments and everything that he is still doing for his people today, go check out Xinguang Kinemigamig, which is just across the street from Algoma University. So in conclusion, the War of 1812 fostered a sense of national identity and pride in the United States and marked the end of significant British influences in the U.S. It also had profound impacts on Indigenous peoples, many of whom had allied with the British. The involvement of Indigenous peoples was driven by their desire to protect their lands and the way of life from American encroachment and their contributions were critical to the British war effort. And also here in Sault Ste. Marie, we did play a vital role. We were the most Western front of the war. So protecting Sault Ste. Marie, Fort St. Joseph, and also with the British capturing Fort Mackinac, we had established control of the movement West. And that is something that's not really talked about. So if you are ever down south, go look and learn about the War of 1812 and see those parts where discussions about the Sioux are missing and try to tell people about what happened here in the Sioux. So I know this is a shorter episode today. This is just a really, really brief overview of the War of 1812 and what happened here in the Sioux. So if you always want to learn more, there is a whole bunch of resources over at the Old Stone House. Go check those out. Or you can always get in contact with us here at the Sioux Museum and we would be happy to tell you more about the War of 1812 and the stuff that was happening here in Sault Ste. Marie. So thanks for listening. Bye. Did you know you can get unlimited admission to the Sault Ste. Marie Museum for a whole year for just $15? Yep, that's right. And there's more perks to that too. Go to Sioux Museum, that's S-A-U-L-T, museum.ca, under visit, and learn more about our membership options. And if you're a business, corporate or nonprofit, we have plans for you too. Reach out to us by emailing info at siouxmuseum.ca with any inquiries. Hi, I'm J.L. Fazell, and I write and publish poetry inspired by nature and the art of being human. These are some of my words. One of my favorite things about living in Northern Ontario is getting to adventure up here and highway driving. It's just endless trees and rocks and beauty and solitude and I, it, it makes me feel connected. So here's Highway Stars. Moving down the highway with the sun shining down on me, kissing my skin with its warmth. If I close my eyes, I can imagine that I've become a shooting star, but I will never burn up. I hope that this poem took you somewhere inside yourself that you needed to go. You can listen to my story here on the Stories of Northern Life podcast. Links are in the show notes.